GarageBand here on your iPhone or iPad has four different track types. We've got audio files, we've got audio loops, we've got virtual MIDI tracks, and we've got drama tracks. So in this video, I'm gonna break down what the difference is between these track types and what you can and can't do. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live Today, where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. And if you use GarageBand, you may have noticed that we have different track types and there's different things that we can do depending on the type of track. So what I wanted to do is dive in and let you know exactly what you can and can't do with each track type so that you can create your best music here in GarageBand. So we have a blank GarageBand project here. I'm just going to tap on the audio recorder and then in the top left, I'm going to tap track view so that we've just in our standard track view. Now, the first track type I'm going to show you is an audio file track. It's different from an Apple Loops track and I'll show you why in just a moment. So what we're going to do is tap in the top right here on the Loops icon and you'll see here we're in files. This is where you'd go to your Apple Loops and there's all your Apple Loops there, but we actually want files because I want to bring in my own WAV file now. I've got another video where I show you how to import, how to download download, import WAV files and any other audio file into your GarageBand project. You can check that out up the top or down in the description. But what we want to do is tap and hold on this background jazz bed and drag it over into our project and drop it in there. So there it is. Now if we hit play on this one. We immediately have a problem, yeah? So it's not matching the tempo of this particular project. So what we need to do is we're gonna undo on this one. This is the key thing to remember with bringing in your own loops is that you need to make sure that the tempos match because with your own audio files, you can't change the tempo, the speed or the pitch, which is something we'll show you in just a moment. So what I wanna do is tap on the spanner icon here in the top right. I'm gonna tap my tempo and I happen to know that this background jazz bed is at 100 BP. So we're going to set the tempo to 100 BPM. We're going to hit on done. Now I've got eight bars set here. If we wanted to make sure we got the whole loop in, we could tap that again and make sure that our, uh, our no, sorry, not that one, we could tap on the plus and make sure that our section here is set to automatic. If that was on automatic, it would bring in the entire loop. I only want eight bars, so I'm good here. So we'll tap on the loop icon again. This time, we'll tap and drag this background jazz bed in like so. And now when we hit play... We are right on the beat because we're matched up to our 100 BPM. So what can you do with an audio file? Well, if we want to do some editing on here, we could do all of our standard editing features. So if we tap on the waveform, we tap again, we've got cut, copy, delete, loop, split, rename, and settings. If we tap on the actual microphone icon over here, you can see we can delete, duplicate, rename, merge, use automation, and we can show in the grid, look at our icons, and that is it. So all of those standard features are available on any type of track that you have pretty much they will vary a little bit which we'll show you here the other thing we can do on any track is come into our mixer icon so up here in the top left we can tap on the mixer and we can come in and add our track settings our plugins and eq and our other effects here so this is something you can do if you're on a smaller iphone by the way in the top right corner you'll drop down the arrow and you'll go to your mixer so this is where we can come in we can add plugins and eq we can add our effects we can add our master effects and i've got videos showing you how to do all of those things which are linked up the top and down the bottom as well as at the end of this video so you'll learn more about those if you would like to but for now let's see the specific things we can do with this audio file track so to see these, we're going to tap on the track itself, we're going to tap again, and we're going to tap on settings. Now this takes us into our settings menu, and for these file types, it's pretty slim. All we can actually adjust here is our gain. So this is our volume that can go anywhere from right down here at minus 30 dB up to plus 12 dB and everywhere in between. So we can adjust our gain there. We can turn looping on and off but we can't at the moment because it is already looped to the whole section. And we can also reverse the track here by tapping on our reverse button and that will reverse the entire track. Let's see what that looks like. And we hit done and take a listen. Yeah, pretty interesting, but probably not the effect that you'd be going for for this particular track. So that is what we can do with this. Uh, I'll show you that looping one again. So let's just assume that we only had half of this. So we'll tap it, we'll split it, and we'll delete this second half. If we just wanted to loop the first half, tap that one, tap again, go to settings, hit looping, and now there you go. It's looped that across these four bars and then the second four bars as well. So there you go. That is how we can adjust it. You can see pretty light on for settings, but 
but there's a lot more you can do with our other track types, which we'll dive into now. So let's now take a look at the cousin of the audio file track, the audio loop track. Now I'm just going to delete this track because I don't like it there. It's making it look messy. We'll tap on the loop icon once again. And this time, instead of the files, we're actually going to stay here in Apple Loops. Now, what I might try, let's try this 60s. No, we'll try the, I think there's a funky shuffle drum set that we wanted to try here. Yeah, there it is. The funky dr shuffle drum set. Let's tap on that to preview it. Yeah, I think that'll work with this jazz loop. It's got a bit of a swing to it. So we'll tap and hold and we'll drag this into our next track. And now if we play these two together, we've left our uh, our jazz bed backwards. So we'll tap that, we'll go settings, we'll uh, unreverse that one. And then let's try that again. Yeah, cool. They seem to be working well together. Uh, I like that. So we will uh, come back to the start here. Now I've realized that I've, I've still got this looped here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unloop this again, settings, and take looping off like so, and actually drag out the original one. So that's how you can unloop and get your original audio back. So what can we do with an Apple loop? Well, we can do all the things that we could do with the audio file, but a bunch more. So I won't show you all the other things, all the standard things you can do with any track, but if we tap on here and this time we tap on our settings, you'll see we've got a much bigger settings option here. So yes, we can still do the gain, we can still do the looping, and we can still reverse our track, but we also have the follow, tempo, and pitch. So so if we turn that off, it removes our ability to change the pitch and of this actual uh, this actual track. But what we can do is with that follow tempo and pitch on, that means that if we change the actual tempo or the pitch of this song, this loop will actually change with it. So I'll show you what that does if we come out here now. So we'll just solo that one. If we wanted to change this in the top right, so we'll go to our icon there, our spanner, and say we wanted to up this to 124 BPM. Now take a listen to this loop. So the beauty of Apple Loops is that they will change tempo when you change the tempo of your song. Here's the problem though, if you've got any other loops in your project, take a listen to this. They will not change their tempo. So that's why you need to be careful. You need to beat match to any of your audio files that are not Apple Loops because you can't actually change their tempo. There are other apps and other software you can do to change tempos. If you're interested in that, leave me a comment and maybe we'll look at that on a future video. But for now, let's take our tempo back down here. Now, this is a drum loop, so it's not gonna have a whole lot of impact here. You can see what's happened to our loop there. We need to stretch it back out again. Um, so this is a drum track. It's not gonna do much to our pitch, but what we can do is here in the spanner, we can also change the key signature. So if we change this key from C, maybe down to A flat major here and hit done, and now we'll keep this one soloed. You can hear that it's actually changed the pitch of those drums. We'll pause it, we'll go to our spanner, we'll go to our pitch again. If we change this one again to B major, So what I'll do is let's just bring in a, uh, a loop here that's actually um, melodic, and this will actually sh show you exactly what this means. So why don't we bring in this above and beyond synth just for a bit of a demo, and we'll solo that one. So this sounds like this. Very cool. But yes, if we chum in, come in here and we change our key signature to say D, now it's going to sound like that. So that is what we can do here. We'll just delete that one out from this track for now. So that's what we can do with the tempo. Oh, we don't want to rename it. That's what we can do with the tempo and the pitch. Let's take a look at some other options that we have here with an Apple loop. So we'll tap it again. We will tap on settings and we'll come in here. The other thing we can do is manually transpose. So if we wanted to change this, we could say, make it higher. Let's make it like a whole octave 12 semitones, which turns into an octave, make it an octave higher. It'll sound uh, kind of high and tinny. So probably not what you'd be going for. And what you'll notice there is as soon as you start adjusting this too much, you get some artifacts in there. And artifacts basically are the little digital clicks and pops that come in when you try to change speed and try to change pitch of what is essentially an audio wave file. So that's kind of why you can't change those on the non-Apple loops because they'll end up sounding bad. The Apple loops themselves can sound a bit ordinary sometimes. The other thing we have here is speed. So speed can be anything from one quarter all the way up to four times. So if we go down to a quarter, then suddenly our loop's gonna be a bit slow motion. And then we can do the same thing, Whoop, not there. We can do the same thing by going back in here and we can up the speed. Let's make it uh, a drummer that's had a lot of coffee. 
Yeah, cool. Maybe not what you'd want to go for. So we'll tap there, we'll tap settings, and we'll come back here and drop our speed back down like so. Uh, let's also bring it back down, maybe like 10 semitones, see if we can get this back to... That's a bit too low. Let's bring it back up a little bit. The problem is once you start playing with this, uh, yeah, sometimes you just need to go back and bring in the original loop again. That's about right. Cool. So that is everything we can do with audio tracks. So these are real live waveform tracks and things that we can do. There's two other types of tracks, our MIDI tracks and our drummer tracks, which we're going to dive into right now. So let's now look at our MIDI or our virtual instrument track. So we're going to hit on the plus button here. Let's come over to our keyboard. And I think an organ is going to go nicely with this one. So we'll go to keyboard. We'll go to more sounds. And yes, we'll choose the classic rock organ and... We're good to go. So what we can do here is let's just record in a quick organ part and then I will show you the options that we have with a virtual instrument because they are very cool. So well, let's just go to chords mode here, which is in the top right corner so that we can just uh, play some. Now I need to bring this back into uh, C major here so that we can access our correct chords. So let's just play this and make sure I'm gonna hit the right chords. Yep, that's cool. So let's just record in a little organ chord part here. Okay, that is cool. We are done. We're going to go back to the track view mode here. So there is our virtual track ready to be edited. So again, we can do all the same things. We can go into our mixer icon. We can do all of our automation, our duplication, everything else by tapping right there. But if we tap on the actual waveform here, or the waveform, the MIDI form, and tap again, then we've got our options here. So they're all pretty similar. But when we go to settings, this last one, we've got a whole new world of options here. So velocity will be very familiar except this time instead of it being gain it is velocity so velocity is different from volume or gain and I've got a video telling you all about why that is so I won't go into detail now but check the video up the top and down in the description if you want to learn about that we've got looping once again so if we turn looping on there you go it'll loop that all the way through which is kind of what we want so we'll leave that there we'll tap tap again go settings quantization now, if you're not familiar with quantization, what quantization does, it will line up your notes. So if your timing is off, you can actually quantize your track. And once again, I'm not going to go into a heap of detail all about quantization because I have a complete video, which is linked up the top and down in the description as well. If you, if you want to, you've got a lot of homework here today to watch some of these other videos. But let's just say we wanted to quantize this onto the eighth note, which is, I think, what we, we used with this one. So we'll tap eighth note and hit done. What quantization does basically is if we tap on this track tap again and go edit you can see here that it lines these right up on the grid so if we wanted our timing to be perfect and it's be lined up on the grid that is what we can do we're going to hit done on that one we'll come back to that edit screen in just a moment and take a closer look tap again tap back into settings the other things we have is transposition like we had before this time we can do octaves as well as semitones so say we wanted to go down a whole octave and make this a really low sound organ And you can hear there that because I put that quantization on the eighth note, it's going da, da, da. It's not swinging it anymore. So we're actually going to want to turn that off. So we'll go to settings, we'll go to our quantization. You can use swing quantization. You can play around with that. But I think I hit the notes okay there. So let's go back to none for quantization on this particular track. Uh, unfortunately, every time you do a setting like that, it kicks you back out. So you have to tap, tap again, go back into settings. So let's bring it back up the octave. Again, you can change the semitones. We have the speed option here, which does the same thing as our Apple loop. So if you wanted to double the speed of this one, we'll do that and hit done. And you can see there it compresses it all in and now it, it won't sound very good, but it'll sound like this. But that's good for if you were doing, say, an EDM track and you wanted to do like a nice speed up. You could do it at like a, a half speed and then one times, two times, four times. If you want to do a nice build into a drop, that can be a good technique to use. So we'll come back out of there. We'll bring our speed back down to 1x. And our reverse does the reversing again. We tap on reverse. We then get a reverse sound. 
which is not going to sound good for this particular track, but it's a cool effect to try out if you are doing something experimental. So there you go. That is what we can do with our virtual instrument tracks, our MIDI tracks. The other thing you would have seen is we have complete editing control. So when I was in the edit screen before, I tapped here on the green section, I hit edit, and now we've got what's called our piano roll editor where we can tap on our notes, it'll play back the note, we can then cut, copy, delete, and change the velocity, which is how hard that note's hit, up and down, like that. We can do a bunch of other things. We can move the notes around. So if we scroll in here, if we want it to be a lower note, we can move it up and down. We can move it sideways as well. So we can reposition the note to a different place. There's a complete editing video, not surprisingly, down in the description and up the top there. If you want to learn MIDI note editing here in GarageBand, it's very cool. It helps you uh, correct those mistakes and enhance those things that are already good. So MIDI note editing, very cool thing to do. The reason we can only edit on the left side is the right side here is just a loop of the left side. So you'll notice here that anything we change over here on the left actually changes over on the right. So if we change a note like that, it changes over here on the right side as well. Let's just undo and undo and hit done. So there you go. That is everything you wanted to know about virtual MIDI instrument tracks and probably a little more. There's one more little track that we want to look at here and that is our drummer track. So let's dive into that now. Okay, time for our last track type, which is our drummer. So we're going to tap on the plus button in the bottom left corner. We're going to scroll across until we find drummer, which is this one here. Let's go with one of our percussion drummer. We'll tap more drummers. Let's bring in Isabella with her Latin percussion into this because we've already got some drums. We just want a little bit of percussion. Let's just uh, play this one. We'll solo it to start with and see what it's sounding like out of the box. Yeah, not bad, but we probably want to make this a bit more swingy and do a few changes. So that's where our drummer editing settings come in. Once again, all of the same settings that you can do on every other track there. You can tap on the actual uh, the actual drum or the percussion icon there, do your automation, rename, merge, do all those good things. But we've got different options in our settings and our editing once again. So we'll tap here, we will tap again. If we go to settings on this one, you can see here we've got velocity, looping, speed, and reverse. So we've got a cut down version of what we have on those virtual MIDI tracks and you know what all of those do so I don't need to show you again we'll hit done on that one but the difference here is how we edit these tracks so let's tap it again let's tap edit and jump in here to our drummer editing so this is where we can decide on it with our drummer which different kit pieces or which different bits of percussion we're going to incorporate in the drums we can make them loud and complex soft and simple we can add swing we can add the number of fills and we can change up the different patterns over here on the right so I've got a complete drummer video that'll be down in the description again so if you want to learn all about using drummer, you can check that one out. But let's just throw some swing on this for now. It's probably going to be a uh, maybe a 1 16th slight swing that we've got on this track. So we'll hit done on that one. Let's come back here, make sure it's not soloed anymore. And there we go. And take a listen at how this works in with the rest of our track. Not bad. We might even need an eighth swing on here. So again, we'll tap, we'll tap again, we'll go edit. And then in our swing settings at 1 16th light, let's go a 1 8th light swing and try it again. Yep, that, that seems to be sitting nicely in the pocket there. So yes, we can do our drama editing here. You can also edit and by cutting and doing all the other things up the top here. You can split, you can loop, you can rename, you can do all of those good things as well here in our drama loop. So yes, there are our four different loop types that we have. Just to recap, we've got our audio file track, which is different from our Apple loop track. It doesn't have as many options. We can't change pitch. We can't change tempo and do beat matching with our own audio files. Our Apple loops let us do a whole bunch more in terms of transposing so turning it up or down in pitch as well as changing the tempo of those ones we've then got our virtual instrument tracks that let us do cool things like quantizing so putting it right on the grid and we can do our in-depth editing here by going into our note editor and our piano roll and editing everything together there and finally we have our drummer track which is a completely different system I like to think of the drummer as you're like the producer you're telling the drummer or the percussionist what to play Play. you're not actually dialing them in yourself so that's a good way to get a cool drum sound or percussion sound on your track so that is going to do it if you've got comments about how you use these different tracks i would love to hear from you drop those down in the comments below there are two more videos that you can check out link down below all about creating in GarageBand. subscribe to the channel by clicking or tapping on the studio live today icon in the top right corner and i'll see you on the next video